book. Today we're reading Vera and Whisker and it is written by Dovaka Premitz. I wonder what Vera's getting up to today. The morning was peeking through the window, but Vera didn't want to meet its eye. She kept her eyes closed, laying in bed with her hands around her cat Whisker. They were inseparable ever since she found him among the long forgotten toys at her nan's magic room. She didn't open her eyes even when she heard mum and dad walking around and Alma calling her just before she tickled her feet. Vera, Vera, wake up! I don't want to, Vera said and rolled over. Alma went to get help from mum and dad. She was in charge of waking up Vera before school every day. But she was struggling to do it today. So she needed a hand from mum and dad, since a leg from Vera was no help at all. Vera, what's going on? Mum and dad asked together from her doorstep. You said I have to go to the hospital today, Vera said sadly. It's not that she was afraid of doctors or hospitals. She just didn't feel like going today. And maybe you'll leave me there again, just like last time. And who knows when you'll get me back again? Mum stood there thinking. Dad was thinking as well. And then Alma had no other choice but to sink into her thoughts. And they fought and fought. And Vera thought they looked a lot like three Professor Balthazars. The only difference was that the real Professor Balthazar had his magic machine that could help everyone. Vera didn't question mum and dad's magic abilities, but she knew they didn't have a machine. At least she has never seen him. Mum spoke first. You're only going for an examination today. You're getting a new pair of glasses and the hospital is not scary at all. The last time we picked you up quickly after three days. Mum raised an eyebrow when she said this. A lot of children stay in the hospital are much longer to get better. Anyway, you're not ill. Your eyes turned inwards just a little. All right, but I can see that Whiskers' eyes aren't the best either. I may be cross-eyed, but his eyes are all around. I think he should go with me. They should take a look at him too. After she came to this conclusion, Vera felt a lot better. Take him along. I'm sure the doctor will have time to fit him in, she heard from Dad. Now hurry up and get ready. We can't be late because there are other children waiting to be seen as well. I would be glad to give up my spot for them. I mean, if they want to be examined, I'm not going to stop them. I can stay at home with Alma and Whisker. Vera tried once again to delay the visit to the hospital, but she gave up as soon as she saw her mum's I don't feel like joking around look. Vera, Mum and Whisker got into the car, in which they were going to drive to the children's hospital in city centre. As she was getting in, she solemnly looked at Alma, walking to school. Vera, Vera would prefer to take the tram, but she didn't want to complain anymore. They reached the hospital, and there, there were so many things there. Walls painted with pictures that made them look like they belonged to a fairy tale. Picture books in the lobby full of white scrubbed and blue scrubbed big and small people rushing around. Where will these people go in Vera asked. Well, they are here, Mum responded, looking for a sign to point them to the eye section. Hmm, Vera held on to Whisker tightly. You never know, he might get scared. Mum came to halt on the first floor and Vera saw that the walls were decorated with pictures of children wearing glasses, which led her to the conclusion that they were here now. As well, above the door it was written, Eye Clinic. Vera read out loud, Does this mean we are here? We are. Mum smiled and she greeted a lady in blue scrubs. Hello, Vera said. We are here for an examination. Whisker and I. Hello. The lady in blue greeted her back. It is very nice of you to come. Please hold on for a couple of minutes and take a look at our picture books until we will call your name. Vera sat in a chair next to her mum and just as she started going through one of the picture books, she heard her name on the loudspeaker. 
She was called into the doctor's office. She clenched her teeth and stepped through the door bravely. At that moment, all of her worries from this morning were gone because there was simply no time for them among all the interesting things that the lady in white, the doctor, and the lady in blue, the nurse, were showing her. First, they sat her down in the middle of the room. From her chair, she was looking at a board with the letter E written many times in different directions. The blue lady pointed to the different letters and Vera pointed to the different directions. She was going to say that she could read, so they could have used the board with letters and numbers, but she gave up. Everyone says she is little anyway. Then they put her behind a table with a binocular that showed the little pictures inside of it, rather than things that are far away. Try to put the parrot into the cage, the doctor said, observing her eyes from the other side of the binocular. I'm trying, I'm trying, but it's not working. I mean, it is impossible, really. Vera replied seriously. Your eyes are following the parrot and I'm following them. But there it is. We are done. You will get a new pair of glasses and you'll keep practising with mum and dad at home and here with us. I will, I will, Vera accepted, although she wasn't really clear on why and how she would practise. She was hoping that mum would know. The doctor reached her arm to help Vera down from the chair and back to her mum. What about Whisker? Vera was confused as she pointed to her cat. You didn't even take a look at Whisker. Oh, I'm sorry, the doctor apologised. She took a small torch and lighted Whisker's right and then left eye. Hmm, the doctor was thinking, which made Vera worried about what she was about to hear. Whisker's eyes are just fine, but I think you missed a little hole in his belly. It will need stitches. If you want, we can do it here. It will only be a little procedure. Oh, well, I think it is not necessary. We're not going to hold you up any longer, Vera said, with a sigh of relief. My sister Alma sometimes takes care of the plushies. I'm sure she'll be able to stitch Whisker up. Vera concluded and quickly grabbed Whisker so that the lady in white would not decide to keep him in the hospital after all. In that case, I will see you next time, said the doctor, and she turned to a boy who was waiting for an examination. Vera, Mum and Whisker said goodbye to the doctor and they left the hospital happy. Vera is getting new glasses, Whisker is getting a tiny stitch in his belly, and Mum already had the biggest smile on her face. In the evening, when Dad was reading a bedtime story, and Vera was half asleep. She whispered, I hope that that doctor didn't want to treat Whisker for real. He is my plushie and plushies are not really alive. She was fast asleep so she didn't hear a Whisker wish her good night straight in the cover and settled onto her pillow comfortably. Thank you for listening. Do Virginia!